The Ummah is in a need today. The Ummah is in need of appreciating the beauty of the Quran once again. Rediscovering what this book is. That is necessary. We have focused for too long on technical knowledge. Technicalities. Only so, so many Muslims, the only time they think about Quran is, is halal or haram. That's it. The ayat of halal and haram are so few and they're even there beautiful. But what about the rest of this incredible book? Oh no, I already know what it says. Really? Because the most intelligent man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was taught this book over 23 years. You already know what it says? And you haven't even read it once? How, how does that work? How do we, we, over, we underestimate this book so easily? So easily. And I, I pray that all of us, as an ummah, wherever we are in the world, we're able to grow in our love and appreciation and admiration of this incredible book. Wallahi, every time I read, every time I read, I find something that just, I have to stop and say, Whoa, Ya Rabb, that was awesome. That is amazing. You know, every time. I literally, I have to stop, sometimes I'm trying to memorize Quran, then I have to stop and take notes. Because that's, it's too awesome, I can't think anymore, I can't memorize anymore. There's something too incredible that just passed, I just passed by. And my, my wish, my hope is whatever little studies I'm able to do, I'm able to share with you as best I can, inshallah ta'ala. And my hope is that you'll support the cause that I'm trying to promote. If you're benefiting from Bayina TV, I make dua that you continue to benefit and continue to grow in your relationship with the Quran. And you can do us a huge favor by spreading the word about it, telling people about it. Because I'm, I'm of the vision that in the next five to ten years, I, I, I like to think in terms of like milestones. If Allah wills, I would like to be able to offer, you know, standardized Quranic education to schools, universities, you know, and I don't want to be a school, I want to help schools. I, I, I want to help individuals. I don't want to, I don't want to come and teach you, I, I may not be able to teach you privately myself. But I want to be able to give you the tools so you can do it from home and you can help your children get something. You know, this is the time to do that for us. So this was the brief message that I had to share with all of you inshallah ta'ala. I hope you benefited from this discussion and I thank you so so very much. This is the last speech I'm giving in Malaysia and I'm, I'm really, I, I, wallahi, I'm, myself and my team, we are absolutely floored and honored to be here. And I'm so happy for the things that are, the good things that are happening here in this country. I know every country has problems and you have problems too, there's no doubt about it. But the opportunities that are here, the opportunities that are here, I am telling you, they are unique. They are unique to the Ummah. And therefore the obligation you have to do something special in this country, in this city especially. It's in this, because you know, when you do something in this city, it'll spread to the rest of the country. That's how the city is. I could tell. This is the cultural capital of this country. So when and, and the Muslims are in significant number here, concerned Muslims, Muslims that are curious and enthusiastic about learning their religion, don't take your deen for granted. Don't take it for granted. Re-educate yourself. Reinitiate a discussion about the Quran. Reorient yourself. You know, maybe sometimes you have a bad opinion about what Allah says. Or you have a, you know, you heard something so long ago and it just made you feel bad. You know, it's so sad that so many people are spreading a message about, about Allah's book that's full of hate. That's full of like hopelessness. And you're going to Jahannam. Like, where did you get that from? We can't do that. We have to spread a message of hope. The Quran is full of hope. And I'm not making that up. You study Quran seriously, you will be filled with hope. You will not be filled with depression. You'll be filled with hope, you'll be optimistic. You know? None of you, for example, should think that you're, you asked Allah for forgiveness and I don't know if I'm forgiven or not. I mean, I, asked, I made istighfar, but I'm not sure. Quran gives us guaranteed answers. How do you know for sure you're forgiven? If you asked Allah sincerely, there's no doubt that you're forgiven. It's done, it's a matter of fact. It's, you know how there are laws of gravity and there are laws of physics? There are laws of, you know, chemistry. There are laws, just like there are laws of istighfar. There are laws of tawbah. There are laws of success in this world. There's laws of success in the next world. They don't change. There are set principles. And the set principle is, if you have sincerely turned to Allah, it's done. You're forgiven. This is guaranteed. There's no doubt about it. You, don't, you should not have to say, I wonder if that was good enough. I wonder if it was, if you were sincere, it was. Worry about what you're going to do in the future now. Don't, don't get stuck in the past. Many of you have wasted time. You haven't spent enough time. Maybe you got busy with other worldly things. 
You didn't give this book the time it deserved. So what? That was yesterday. Allah gave you enough to be, be, be able to breathe today and do something about tomorrow. So change now. Make the intention now. Don't be like, oh, I've failed so many years. Nothing's going to change. No. Then you're saying you know the future. And we know only Allah knows the future. The only thing you know is the past. That's the only thing you know. Allah will change you like you would never have imagined. Never have imagined. I know that about myself. So I know that about you. Allah Azza wa Jal can change people when they make the intention. That's all, all, all it is is a matter of you deciding that. You guys are the hope of so many people that are losing touch with their deen in this country. There are people that are just Muslim by name now. There are people that don't pray anymore. And even if they pray, it's artificial. They're only holding on to deen because, you know, if they leave it or if they don't act on it, then people will look bad at, you know, badly towards them. This is not sincere deen anymore. We have to bring the sincerity back. We have to give people a reason to love Islam, even Muslims. We have to give them a reason to do that. And when you guys, when you people sitting in this hall, when you people become inspired by Qur'an, you will be able to inspire others. You'll be able to share that, that wealth with others and say, hey, look, look at this, listen to this. I want to tell you about this. Look at how awesome that is. Look at how beautiful Ayatul Kursi is. Isn't that cool? Oh, I never knew that. That's pretty awesome. How do you do that? Like, how did Allah do that? Well, He's, he's kind of Allah. So he, could, he, he, could, he, could, he could do that. Because I can't do that. Yeah, I know. I know. And that's just one ayah. And He said, bring a whole surah like this. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> you know? So, I, 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 as, as we're leaving this country, inshallah ta'ala, Myself, my team, we're going to be making lots and lots of du'a for you. And I'm, I'm absolutely certain if Allah gives the, the, the permission, my intention is to try and come back. And I, I want to be able to have a sustained relationship and be able to serve this community as in, in whatever capacity I possibly can, given my obligations back home also. Some of you know that I have two kind of missions. I have a mission of Qur'an education and a mission of helping Arabic studies. You know, and that's the, that's the bigger one actually, that's the harder one. The short term is Qur'an studies. Long term, if we can educate the Ummah in Arabic the right way, man, we won't, you won't have to listen to me. You won't have to listen to like uh, me explaining the Arabic of the ayah. You'll already know it because you're a high school graduate. You know, that's, that's the state I want the Ummah to reach. And by the time our kids are teenagers, they know their stuff. Like they know it. They own it. You know? And they have so much confidence in Islam that when somebody makes a criticism of Islam, they don't just get angry for emotional reasons, they laugh because they can see how stupid their criticisms are. That's the kind of confidence I want to see in Muslim youth. I want to see Muslim girls in this country. So many women, mashallah, here wear the hijab with pride. It, makes, it really makes my heart melt. I'm a father of four daughters. It, it makes me so happy to see the kind of like Willing enthusiasm towards Islam our sisters have in this country. Really, I make so much dua for you. Every time I see a sister in hijab, and I see lots of them in the, you know, in the street walking around, I just make dua like, Ya Allah, bless these people. You know? Because th this, is, this is something powerful. It's not something small. You take it for granted. The, the, the world is moving away from religion. You know that? It's moving away from religion. All religions, Islam included. You people have to... Hold on, and not just hold on, give a reason to, peop give, to, give a reason, uh, to people to come back. And I keep repeating myself because I can't, feel, I can't tell you how strongly I feel about this stuff. I really, really do. So I leave you with lots and lots of du'as, and I'm hoping I leave with all of your du'as also, for ourselves, our team, all of our students that are trying to study as best they can, all the students that are trying to study this thing in any capacity, anywhere, you know, whether they're under myself or other shuyukh or other scholars, other institutions, we make dua that Allah produces people, leaders in this ummah that are worthy of being followed, that are sincere and genuine to the people, that are, that are open thinkers, that are critical thinkers, that are intellectual, that aren't narrow-minded, that give a reason, the, the ummah a reason to be united and not be more divided, you know? This is what we want in our ummah. And so I pray for all of that as I leave you. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.